Before we start with operations of vectors, I just want to revise equal vectors. Two vectors are equal if they have equal magnitude and are in the same direction. Therefore, in the parallelogram, the following vectors are equal, AB and DC, and similarly, DA and CB. Okay, let's start. Let's start with operation with vectors. You will find this on page 228 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Operation with vectors. Vectors can be added or subtracted as well as multiplied by a scalar, that means a number. In ordinary level, we learn these operations in two dimensions. Now we will revise these operations, meaning in two dimensions, and extend these rules to three dimensions. So let's, it's just a lot of theory. So addition of vectors. We can add two vectors by joining them here to tail. Where one vector ends, the next vector starts. Okay, so it's there and this one. And then we are joining them. And then we say that, okay, uh, the PQ plus QR is equal to PR. So we start at the same point and we end at the same, same point. So let's just say it again. If you walk from P to Q and then from Q to R, and I walk, we start at the same point, I just walk from P to R, and I end at the same point as you. Then our vector movements are exactly the same. You, you were walking a longer distance, I were walking a shorter distance. But because we start at the same point and end at the same point, where our displacement, our vectors are the same. Okay. So must be the same point. So so if you, this is here to tell. So if if we end there, we will start with Q there, and then this is the start and the end. Okay, so in terms of vectors, you can check, because if I add, I get 2, and if I say 2 plus 3, so the sum of the two or more vectors is called the result. That's exactly the same in terms of vector movement. Okay, let's go on. When vectors are expressed in terms of Cartesian components, it's easy to add the two vectors to find their combined or resultant vector. In two dimensions, we add the I components together and the J components together. In three dimensions, we do the same, but also add the K components together. Different roots, but the same resultant. If you start at the same point and you end at the same point, but take different roots, the direct or shortcut route, the resultant vector will be the same. The final will be the same in terms of vectors. Okay, vectors which are opposite. The diagram shows a ship which sails 10 kilometers from K to S on a bearing of 7 degrees. The vector K gives the displacement of the ship from K to S. SK is the opposite direction to KS. So if you go back, and indicates the return journey. In general, a negative sign reverses the direction of the vector. Negative P is the vector that is opposite to vector P. The vector P and negative P have the same magnitude, but they are in opposite direction. So if KS is P, then SK will be negative P. And I think we also mentioned it in previous videos. So as soon as I change the direction, I must put a negative in front of it. Now, subtraction of vectors. We can subtract one vector from another. First, we reverse the direction of the vector. We want to subtract the negative of the vector, then add the vectors. Note. The difference of two vectors, a and b, noted by a minus b, is the sum of a minus So basically, it's just saying, if I just run, it's actually just a plus the negative b. So there's a uh, minus, there's b, but, but look what I do, there's a, I reverse that direction, and then I make it negative b. So it's going to be a, it's a bit, bit small that you don't see that negative, it is there, I'm going to make it a bit bigger, move up, ready to that part. So, so it was, mm, let's just go, 
it was a a and that this was b but now we reverse it and that's negative b and then it's going to be a minus b and that's how i do it okay and i showed you there uh, to subtract two vectors subtract the corresponding components so it's just like you did with direct numbers so it's four minus and a negative times becomes a positive and that's why it's six two minus three the, the, and it's negative one just like directed numbers when vectors are expressed in terms of Cartesian components, it's e easy to subtract two vectors to find their combined or resultant vector. In two dimensions, we subtract the i components and then the j components. In three dimensions, we do the same, but also subtract the k components, which is bring in the extra one. Okay, and now let's just go to the multiply. I'm going to make it a bit bigger again to see better. Multiply a vector by scalar quantities which only have magnitudes such as distance, mass, speed are called scalar quantities. Quantities which have both magnitude and direction such as velocity, force, acceleration are called vector quantities. When we multiply a vector by scalar, it's called scaling a vector because we change how big or small the vector is. So if I multiply this with 2, it becomes twice as long. Do you see that? So a multiply it's 2a. To multiply a vector by a scalar, multiply the horizontal distance x and the vertical distance y by the scalar. So it's basically just multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and it's twice as long. The same with divide. Um, go up that we finish, can finish. To divide the scalar, we multiply by its reciprocal. Okay, so it's going to become shorter. So it's multiply a half, so it's half shorter. Okay, and rest in it's just a half. To divide the vector by scalar, divide the horizontal distance x and vertical distance y by the scalar number. Do this by multiply its reciprocal. Okay. So basically, I, the best is first to make it a half and then to multiply and multiply and then you just, otherwise you just say 4 divided 2, 2 divided 2 and it also becomes 2 and 1. Okay, let's look at parallel vectors and then we are ready for an example. It's just a lot of theory, it's coming from ordinary level. Parallel vector, scalar multiplication generates new vectors that are parallel to the original vector. So two vectors are parallel if one is a scalar multiple of the other. Okay, so this is parallel to this and to this because I was multiplying, if you can see, I was multiplying there with three. So three, three, three. Okay, <laughs> now three, three, three. And then if I was looking at this one, multiply, um, okay, I'm just going to clean it, then I was multiplying, looks like I was, okay, let's just rather put it here, I was multiplying by negative 4, then it becomes negative 12, I, positive 8, because it's a negative and a negative, and then negative 16, because you can take out the scalar, 3 and negative 4, so as soon as you see you can take out the scalar, and you are getting the original one, then the vectors will be parallel. Okay, but let's use that principles. Let's look at the example first. Find the vectors a and b if this is parallel to this. Okay, so if this is parallel, I take out the k. Okay, so this is going to be 3 a minus b. So I put a k there. Okay, basically, I take that one, I put a k in front of this one. This will also work where, you, where I did this. Okay, so for the vectors above form three equations, so 10 equals k5, this equals uh, 3k, this equals this. So then I get that k is 2, okay, that's easy. Then I can substitute the 2, okay, substitute uh, the 2 there and the 2 there, and I get this, and then I just solve it simultaneously, and I get a is 2.5, and I get b. E. It's negative 0 0.4. Not very difficult. Okay, I'm just going to give you the first one. I want you to stop the video and I want you to do number one. Again, you can continue the video 
as soon as you are finished. Okay, so if I say find x and y if, okay, let's just first write the original down. x, 6, y equals h, 1, negative 3, y. Okay, so if I'm starting with this, now actually I gave it to you already in that format. Okay, so I think the best will first be, you can do it like this. I'm going to do it like this x, 6, y, and I'm going to multiply the h in. So therefore, x is equal to h. I, I form my 3. So this is equal to this. Uh, 6 is equal to negative 3 h, the middle, and y is equal to 5 h. Okay, so if I'm going to, I'm just going to substitute and see what do I get. I think the best will be to, because x is equal to h, I'm going to say 6 is equal to negative 3x. And y, y, oh, I can actually work out h. Yeah, no, no, let's just not make it too difficult. I'm trying to make it too difficult. Look for the one that's only having one. This one is two variables, two variables. Start with this one. So if I start with this one, I divide negative 3, I divide negative 3. So I get that h is, if I say 6, it's going to be negative 2. Okay, did you see? Because I divide negative 3, divide negative 3, 6 divide negative 3 is negative 2. Now I say, so therefore, x is equal to h, so x is equal to negative 2. Okay, and now I just get y, and y is equal to 4, 5h, and I put the negative 2, so y is equal to negative 10. And there I got, I get x, h, y, and that is all, therefore y is negative, and that's how we do it.